So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm coming with a little bit different topic. <laughs> uh, I'm Esther Viraktulashay, and I would like to present my PhD thesis. That is comparison of different therapies for anterior shoulder dislocation. So I am working as a resident doctor at the Department of Orthopedics at Samalweis University, and then I am a first year PhD student. I know that we shouldn't mention names, but I would like to say thank you for Gabos Karitsky and Anna Lengyel for the help during these three months. And my vision is that in the future, uh, shoulder dislocation will not be a long-term limiting injury for young people. My mission is not to be the best shoulder, uh, shoulder surgeon, but finding be the best choice therapy for each patient with anterior shoulder dislocation. So now we have two specific goals. The first one is the investigation of safety and efficacy of different therapies for anterior shoulder dislocation in the acute phase. And the second one is about the recurrent shoulder dislocation. So I would like to show my first topic. Shoulder dislocation is about half of all joint dislocations and about 97% uh, of these being an anterior one. An acute traumatic shoulder dislocation causes a lot of pain and a lo lot of soft tissue damages. And the problem is that internationally we have a lot of treatment options. We all know that means that we don't have the exact the best one. So the question is, conservative treatment is enough or we need a surgery? If we need a surgery, which one? A soft tissue surgery is enough like Bankart or we need a wound grafting like Latage procedure. So our aim is there are currently no international recommendation for appropriate treatment, so we would like to provide an evidence on this problem. Our clinical question is really simple. Which therapy is the best for the patients with acute anterior shoulder dislocation? Our population is the patients with diagnosed acute anterior shoulder dislocation, and we would like to compare the conservative treatment, the bankard surgery, and the open latage procedure in a network meta-analysis. We have two main outcomes. The first one is the safety, like pain, complications, and redislocation rates. And the second one is the efficacy, like range of motion, return to sport, and scores. Our hypothesis is that bankard surgery has the highest efficacy and the lowest rates of complication in acute anterior shoulder dislocation. If we have true, the clinical implication is important because we can have for the surgeon and we can have for the patients so everybody win. You can see my systematic search that I made in three databases and my search key contains four domains. The first one is about the joint, the second one is about the injury and the third one is about the treatment options and the fourth one is about the randomization. I would like to show two key articles. The first one is about the um, soft tissue surgery, we call it Bankart, versus the conservative treatment. This article has some strengths because it's a new publication and they check the same age group as we would like to check, but they only examine 20 patients. The second key article is about the surgery options like Bankart and Latage. The strength is that uh, they examine more than 100 patients and the same age group as we would like to examine, but they check only male population and the follow-up time was really short, only two years. You can see my flowchart of the selection. Uh, we start with around 2,000 uh, two uh, article. After the duplication removal, we got around uh, 1,000 article. With the title abstract selection, we got around 100, and now after the full text selection, we have 35 articles. So you can see my progress in the first project. Uh, we finalized the full text selection, and I am working on the data extraction. And now I would like to speak about my second project, that is investigation of safety and efficacy of open latage surgery in recurrent shoulder dislocation. As I mentioned before, shoulder is the most commonly dislocated joint, and the problem is that the recurrence rate is really high, almost 100% in the younger population. So redislocation for the shoulder is like Grinch for the Christmas. It's 
cause a lot of soft tissue damages and it causes a lot of bone damages. So we all know that we have to make a surgery, but it's not clear which one. Soft tissue reconstruction is enough or bony correction for the glenoid is needed. The aim is the same as the first topic. There are currently no international recommendations for appropriate intervention, so we would like to provide an evidence on this problem. Our clinical question is that which therapy is the best for the patients with recurrent anterior shoulder dislocation? Our population is the rec uh, patients with recurrent anterior shoulder dislocation. The intervention is the open latage procedure, and our comparison is the bunker surgery. We have the same two uh, outcomes, like in the first project, the safety and the efficacy. And our hypothesis is that Latage has the highest efficacy and safety in the uh, anterior recurrent shoulder dislocation. If our hypothesis is true, the clinical implication is really important because we have the surgeons. But most important thing is that we can give back a fulfilled life for, the, for an active, sportly motivated young population. You can see my preliminary search. The search key contains four domains like joint, uh, the injury, and the treatment options. And to summarize, uh, we have two problems, and uh, of these two problems is not uh, has a solution yet internationally. So we can say it's a big black hole. So we have to work a lot. And I would like to say thank you for your attention and time. And we all know that hope is not enough. Thank you very much for your great presentation. I have a question. If I remember correctly, you. Um, you said in your first project that you limited the patient population to a very, to only to young people. Why did you have to make this decision? Uh, it has two reasons. Because firstly, uh, this injury is mostly in the young population because they are the most active, like overhead athletes or, and contact athletes. And the second one is that the, in the older population, the humerus bone structure is so weak that this injury and this big mechanism cause a fracture mostly. So it's a different mechanism. Thank you. Thank you for your question. My question relates to Laura's presentation also. Uh, question also. Uh, how would you define the younger population? What's the age restriction for this group? Uh, the most of the articles say that 15 to 30 is the most common population. So we determine the age group about the key articles. My question is regarding the population for the first project. So how would you handle uh, patients with, uh, with other injuries like slap lesions during this acute uh, uh, dislocation? Or do you have any, any idea how to, how to include them or exclude them? Yeah. Thank you, the question. We include only the first dislocation, and we exclude all of the patients who has other injuries in the shoulder, like uh, rotator cuff tear, or glenoid bone fracture, or slap lesion. So it's really clear. Yeah, it's clear. Thank you very much. One more question. What is the anatomical background of the higher frequency of anterior dislocation in comparison to, to any other directions? If I'm correct, this is what I yeah. know at least. Yeah, I said that 97% of this anterior, because the rotator cuff uh, make the safe uh, the glenoid glenohumeral joint, but the rotator cuff is mostly posterior and superior, and in anterior way there is a lack. So if you make this uh, motion, it the rotator cuff is uh, moving, and because of that the shoulder can be uh, anteriorly and inferiorly go out. So this is the reason. So subscapularis is not enough? No. OK. <laughs> to know. Thank you. Uh, I also have another question that's a great presentation, first of all, that uh, you were mentioning a very high recurrence rate. Yeah. Almost 100%. In a younger population. OK, but anyway, that's, that's huge. I mean, what is happening during the first surgery then? I mean, isn't that your, your most 
uh, relevant primary endpoint that, that what is the recurrence rate? Um, the recurrence rate is 100% if we didn't do anything. If, uh, because of that, we would like to examine the immobilization and the surgery methods. Uh, and the recurrence rate is high because uh, the soft tissue uh, be so weak that couldn't uh, stay uh, the glenohumeral uh, joint in, in its place. So this is the reason. Yeah, I understand, but you assume that, that uh, if you operate the recurrent uh, dislocation, then you will have a uh, lower rate of second yeah. recurrence? Yeah, then we why hope not, so. <laughs> why not operate the first one already? Um, because uh, we checked the immobilization now and the surgery options, and if we make a, a long-term immobilization and after a good rehabilitation, it can be a good result. So maybe the recurrence rate will be lower.